So another tale on my journey that would end with me living in the Philippines. So for this one, we go back, we go back to 1996 approximately. And I wanted to make some more money. So I saw an advert in the newspaper. It said, a carder wanted someone to put cards in phone boxes. We had phone booths back then, many. And this was in central London. So I replied to the ad, I phoned up. Come to central London, they gave me an address to go to. They would supply me with, I can't remember how many cards it was now, maybe a couple of thousand. Just, you know, little cards, that long. And all I had to do was go to as many phone booths as I could and put the cards up. Now, the cards were for a prostitute, call girl, escort girl, whatever you want to call her. And there were many of them based in central London because I suppose that's where the biggest amount of money is. Well, I didn't care, you know, no business of mine, so long as, you know, I get paid for what I do, who cares? So I went to the place, the apartment. The madam opened the door and the prostitute showed her face. She was kind of, as far as I can remember, it was nighttime, oriental looking, but she was English, she was British. They gave me the cards. I had a plastic bag, put the cards in the bag and off I went. So I'm going the whole width of what we call Oxford Street, which is a mile, maybe more long. That's at the time, and still to a degree, the biggest shopping hub in London. And in those days, I was quite a quick walker. It was freezing cold. I had my coat on. It must have been about eight o'clock in the evening, winter, obviously. And um, there I go, putting cards, sometimes one, sometimes two, into all these phone booths. The only problem was there were tens, 20, 30 more cards from other prostitutes in there, from rival prostitutes. Um, I think she had said to me, if I see any other cards in there from other people, rip them out, take them down. So I unduly did what she asked me to do and I started taking them down. Half an hour, no, must have been more than half an hour. A good hour later, I'm frozen. I'm walking really fast, but I'm still freezing cold. But I'm doing what I was asked to do. And toward the end, as I'm approaching the end of this Oxford, um, the road, shall we say, the long, long road, Oxford Street. I'm in the phone booth. I've got her number, the prostitute. So I phone her up to let her know I've nearly finished. To which she replies, you're not putting those cards in the phone booths. I haven't received one phone call from anyone wanting my services. You're working for someone else, aren't you? And I just said, no, I, I'm doing what you requested. I've gone into every phone booth and there were many phone booths, trust me. And I'm putting your card up and as, as far as I'm able, I'm, I'm taking down the cards of, you know, your rivals, basically. No, you're not. Finish off what you're doing and come come to my apartment and I'll give you your money. So I thought, Jesus, what the fuck? I don't like the sound of this. 
So anyway, another 20 minutes and I'd finished as much as I was able to do. I go to her apartment, which is about 15, 20 minutes away. It's still freezing cold, but I've done what she asked me to do to the best of my ability. I get to the door, ring the bell, and the madam answers. And she says, whatever the, uh, the prostitute's name was, I don't know. She's not happy with you. She doesn't think you've been putting the cards in the photo, in the um, phone booths. And you're working for one of the other girls. So I just said, well, it's, I didn't lose my temper. I just said, no, that's not true at all. I went to every phone booth like I was asked and I put all the cards in there. Well, because of that, we can only give you half of the money we said we would give you, we would pay you. So they gave me half, I don't know what it was, I don't know, I think it was something like the equivalent of $20. And then she, the prostitute, comes to the door, starts screaming at me, swearing, screaming, you fucking liar. You never put any of those cards in the photo booth. Yes, I did, I said. I haven't had any phone calls. It's impossible that you put cards in the phone booths. I would have had callers by now. I would have had customers. Fuck off, she goes. I didn't say anything more. I took my $20 equivalent and off I went. Never to answer a newspaper ad to do with anything like that again. So I made some money that evening. Not what I thought, even if I'd have made the full $40. It wasn't that, <clears throat> excuse me, it wasn't that much. But I made half and got abuse thrown in. So that was, as I said, around about 1996. I wonder if she's still whoring probably getting too old for that now. In terms of what age was she there, I only caught a glimpse of her while she was throwing abuse at me. I'd say she was about 23, 24, 25, something in that region. Not pleasant. And little did I know that night when I was freezing, that night when that prostitute Paid me. Little did I know that somewhere in the end, many years later, I would end up here in the Philippines with my Filipina. And all that garbage that was collected for so, for so many years was just thrown away in the end, for what I really always wanted.